Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions, Ink the Aggression, making their way to the ring. And Brady, I gotta tell you, I was blown off of my seat when these guys lost. These oh. guys came in a house of fire and beat everyone in their path. Yes, I think everybody was blown away when Ink Aggression lost to the Hung Chung Wong Kung Fung Ku Warriors. But I tell you what, you look at Abu Colossus tonight. You look at that man. That man has revenge in his eyes. And when you're pissed off like that, I feel sorry for Yang and Wang. The Wang Chung Warriors! Ink Aggression will end tonight once again 3XW Tag Team Champions. Your fourth, well, Ink Aggression, your former champions, Wang Chung Warriors, your current tag champs, come out, they've thrown out uh, fortune cookies to the fans in the audience. Hopefully the fortunes are in their favor here tonight. See, like and I that's, said. Why, that's why these guys are not desirable. Brady A. Desire would have been selling the fortune cookies, not giving them away for free. Nothing comes for free from Brady A. Desire. I guess. I said it on outside the ring. I think I think Ink is gonna take the belts back here tonight. I feel like they were a little taken off, or caught off guard, if you will, by the Wing Chung Warriors. Ricky, Kong, Ricky Kwong and 116th Asian Aaron Masterson. Yes, last month Yao and Ming, they, they won the lottery when they when they upset Ink Aggression, but I don't think they're going to win the lottery two months in a row. Uh, it's, it's hard to win more than once, let alone twice. As a former tag team partner of Abu Colossus, I can tell you what this guy's mindset's like. He is so mad, so hot about everything. I mean, the only, like, Abu has no, zero disregard for his opponent's well-being, let alone his partner's well-being. I know that firsthand. <laughs> so you do not want to get in that ring with a pissed off Abu Colossus. I was told backstage before the event that Aaron Masterson's been practicing with some chopsticks. Been trying to learn the uh, ways of his ancestors, as he put it to me. I don't know how good that's going to fare against a guy like Abu Colossus. Abu probably doesn't even use utensils when it comes to mealtime. Doesn't have a guy that'll club something and eat it with his bare hands. I, I just don't understand why Aaron Masterson would waste time learning to use chopsticks for a wrestling match. I... Oh! Oh, again a big slam to the ground. Oh my God! Oh, he's gonna send him back to China with that one. Oh, right back on the other side of the wall with that clothesline there. But it's not often that I agree with you, Brady, but I get, at this point I gotta agree with you. Why spend time trying to figure out chopsticks while preparing for a tag team championship match? To, to, to quote the Karate Kid movie, get the body bag. <laughs> yeah. Ricky Kwong with a side headlock on Abu Colossus. Able to hold on to it, Abu. Try to throw him off. The biggest, like the most impressive thing to me about these guys winning their tag team belts is Ricky Kwong had spent over a year away from the ring. Came back, his first matchup back here in 3X Wrestling was a victory and a tag team title victory over Ink Aggression. Oh! Oh! Yeah, well I believe uh, Ink Aggression uh, filed a legitimate protest about that match. And, um, you know, we, we think that Ricky Kwong uh, paid somebody off. At least that's the rumor that was going around backstage last month. <laughs> that's the rumor. I see. I'm up here. I'm not, I'm gonna, you know, it's, I'm very hard pressed to get a hold of those oh, backstage rumors being up here in the crow's nest. And again, Ricky Kwong tries it. And it's like running into a, bri a brick building. 
It's like running into the outside of the come and go theater, trying to shoulder tackle Abu Colossus. Abu is just to uh, toying with him here tonight. Kwong wants Abu to hit the ropes, and I don't know how smart that is. Ah! He had a little trick up the sleeve, if you will. As my great grandfather said, never trust a Chinaman. But great grandpa was in the war and very racist. Oh, double accidental off the top. So, which one's Hung and which one's Chung? It's Wang Chung. Which one's Wang and which one's Chung? Um, I, I believe. Mean, they, all, all Chinamen look the same, so. Uh, they do look those all the same. As far as I knew, it was two. Uh, it was two Jackie Chans out there right now competing in the ring. Ricky Kwong, I believe, if you're going to give him top billing on this team, he's got to be Wang. He was the one to teach Aaron Masterson how to Wang Chung all night. Because everybody wants to Wang Chung. Oh, come on, referee, look at this. They've got a five Wait. count. You Wait. said it earlier in the evening. For the rules. My count was a five. I had to sit four up here. They have a five count to exchange in and out. There was no tag. It's a tag match. You have to make the tag. But as I was saying, Ricky Kwong was the one to teach Aaron Masterson how to have fun. And he taught him how to Wing Chung. No! And you got to watch Levi McDaniel. Kwong's in a spot he does not want to be in that's on the mat against the aggression. Only a one there. Abu trying to stretch that shoulder out on the way to the outside. Ah, uh, Levi rakes the eyes. Do you see the influence that Brady A. Desire had in 3XW? That's like the fourth or fifth time we have seen them use my movie. Yeah, right. tonight. Hey, you can take credit for you all you want. I know Levi McDaniel, like I had said earlier tonight. Oh, what a chop. Levi McDaniel is a throwback wrestler. He's he my is, kind of wrestler. He is nothing fancy. Just look at the ring attire. Refuses to wear knee pads in the ring. A throwback to the dirty dick slaters of this industry. And he quickly tags into Abu Colossus. And this guy is not only a throwback, a throw around and throw you up and down type of competitor. No! Oh! Oh. I mean, a headbutt like that could cause internal bleeding. Oh! Abu Colossus just dropping everything he's got on the small of the back of Ricky Kwong. No, oh, what a right hand there. And Brady, you've got to be liking the way that integration is getting it done right now. Oh, absolutely. But once again, I called this before the match even started. I said Abu Colossus oh! was one pissed off man tonight. They say, hell has no theory like a woman scorned. But I will put one above that and say, hell has no theory like a pissed off Abu Colossus. Especially when you steal his gold. <laughs> Levi McDaniel with it. At, it's just a textbook step over toehold. Going back in, great finding the leg, drops the point of the elbow into the knee. And this is, Levi spent a lot of time in Japan training. Uh, he went over there in the Navy, was able to build up in, in his off time, work with a lot of the dojos over there. And he's brought that style of wrestling. And it just all around created this unique style that you do not see these days. You do not see guys like Levi McDaniel 
anymore in professional wrestling right now. He's stretching the ankle over the back of his own head. I have never seen this. I have never seen anyone just use their body as a weapon the way Levi has so far tonight. Apparently you don't uh, watch much wrestling then. That is a <laughs> classic move from the 70s. I'm only 27 years old. I don't watch a whole lot of 70s style. Here comes Aaron Masterson in. Ducks the line off the ropes. Flying clothesline there. Masterson with the pin. One, two. Oh, only a two count there. Oh. Masterson asking everybody to have some fun. Oh, missed a dive coming off. Oh. Like we had said earlier, nowadays guys will try to, you know, lift the entire body of their opponent coming off for a DDT. But, you know, uh, Levi being the throwback competitor, that, you know, that ground and pound, that old school style, didn't even right. give Masterson a chance to set up after missing that move. Just drove everything right onto the point of the skull with that DDT. Just like the great legendary Jake the Snake Roberts, the best DDT in the business. Oh my god, what a backbreaker. <laughs> oh wow. That hurt up here. I felt that one all the way up in the booth. It's great tag team wrestling right there. He's keeping uh, Wang or Chung, whichever one Aaron Masterson is, he's keeping him away from this corner. Uh, it's very smart wrestling. Look at bite it. Come on, referee. That's not legal. Two. You cannot bite. Three, for, he's got a five count. See? Levi knows the rules. He's obviously been uh, going out to lunch with my broadcast colleague. A little flip flop and fly from Levi. Levi and I have been known to uh, throw back a Keystone Light every a now Keystone. and then. From a Dirty 30. That's his favorite beer, by the way. So it's a 15 each, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Levi's got that half crab setting in deep. Aaron's doing a great job of trying to alleviate the pressure by extending his arms, trying to get that back as flat as possible. Levi wasted a little time there arguing with the audience. They're able to kick up off the mat. Oh, now Levi working the half cap on the other side. Stepping over into an STO. Or STU, sorry. He's got him dead center in the ring. Or STF. I get confused on all the damn letters. You know, one thing that could come back to hurt Levi McDaniels and Abu Colossus here later in this match is Levi McDaniels had that move locked in in the dead center of the ring, and he let it go. That's very, it's very, very sound commentary. That's what 13 years experience is getting you up here in this booth tonight. The insight that oh. you just don't look for in a match. <laughs> I guess that's what this booth has been missing, is some experience. That's right. But at a certain point, you gotta feel like maybe they're feeling a little cocky right now. They've got it all wrapped up, not looking to lock it away the way they could have right there. Oh, Ink Aggression had this locked up the minute that Wang Chung showed up tonight. Just freaking his eyes across the ropes. See, and then he helped the man off the ropes. <laughs> Well, he kind of forced him off. Forced, helped. We're just splitting hairs at this point, I feel. And you gotta, the one thing that I have learned from teaming with Abu and then watching Abu is when he's got you down, he will trash talk you like no other. 
And that's got to wear on the psyche. Oh, he's got him up. Oh! Jesse Ventura, eat your heart out. I have not seen anybody hit that move better since him. And how's that for your throwback? That was a, that was a very good reference. Yeah. But what I was saying, it's got to wear on your psyche when you're getting it handed to you in that ring to have a guy telling you about it the whole time. What a sidewalk slam and wisely into his own corner. We've seen Ink Aggression hit this before. Abu comes off with a colossal bomb and Levi with a double stomp. Why did, now why didn't he go for the pin right there, Brady? Because at this point in the match, Ink Aggression knows they have the belts locked up and they were embarrassed last month. So they're going to make Wong and Chung pay for embarrassing them. You do not embarrass Levi McDaniel and Abu Colossus. Yeah, Levi now just raking in every part of the face and head that he can get a hold of with that camel clutch. We saw him go from the ears to the nose to the fish hook of the face. And just like that, he halts all momentum that Masterson was trying to gain on the mat there. Eighth aggression showing why they were undefeated for so long in 3X Wrestling. Making quick tags, they have cut the ring in half, and they are working the one man over in their corner. I mean, Brady being no stranger to tag team competition, you know that the strategy they're deploying is most likely going to end in a victory tonight. Oh, absolutely. You know, one thing, the, a strategy that my brother and I employed when we wrestled in Las Vegas, we were the AWA Sin City Tag Team Champions. And then we stopped wrestling. We are going on nine years oh. of being tag team champions. Well, That's how you keep a, the belts. There's a statute of limitations in seven years that says that you are no longer champions. What a counter there by Masterson. Medendo, get the tag in. Here we go, Quanton. What a chop there! A hip block there almost. Oh! Another knife edge into the corner. Big time Japanese whoop. Oh! Follows it up with a huge cross body. Oh! What a slam there! A pump handle into almost a Saido type suplex. Wow. And whatever crazy tactics you throw out, Abu Colossus could just stomp it just like that. Well, Abu was the legal man still. Oh, what a T-bone. Inside out goes Ricky Kwong. Oh, Masterson's got that headband on. It seems to be some kind of source of strength and power. Uh, not enough power. for the double choke bomb. Oh! They call that the sweet and sour combo! And that's all she wrote! It's still your 3S Wrestling Tag Team Champion! The 
Impact Wrestling Tag Team Titles. Off of the sweet and sour combo. You gotta be impressed by these guys. They've come out here twice now as a tag team and have defeated one of the greatest teams 3X Wrestling seen in many a years. Oh, what the hell? Who's, who are these guys? Oh, these are the big boys! Aaron. What the heck? These are the... So the King Brothers! The King Brothers, the big boys of 3XW. Former 3X Wrestling Tag Team Champions! The King Brothers, what the hell are they doing here? We haven't seen these guys in, in how long? Years. Years. Not since they were defeated by the Bulldogs. Jake and Ryan King, the King Brothers. Oh, what an Irish whip. Well, Aaron Rashford trying to fire it up, trying to fight back. Oh! What a Samoan drop. Da, da. I mean, what are the... My mind's got to go to Skyler Pierce. He had to do something. He had to have something to do with this. The last time we saw, we saw the King Brothers, Skylar Pierce was not too far behind. I'm guessing you won't see Skylar Pierce associated with the King Brothers until they win those 3XW Tag Team Champions because he only manages champions. The King Brothers are back in 3X Wrestling and boy are they ever back. You know, when you're tag team champions or when you're a champion at any level here at 3XW, you've always got to have eyes in the back of your head because there's always, always going to be somebody coming for your gold.